Good morning. Thanks, Rich. Oh, what a great talk by Bridget. Uh, there are a lot of good messages in there that I think a lot of us were just back there like nodding our head up and down. Um, I wish I had some really cool messages like that. But I'm going to tell a story. Um, so I'm Dave Newman, um, PMC for traffic control, like Rich said. Um, that slide before this said I was an engineering leader, which is just my way of saying that I was an engineer and like recently, really, really recently went into management and I don't really know how to deal with that yet. Um, so engineering leaders sounded great. Um, anyway, I'm here, I'm kind of bait and switching you guys, I think, because the story of traffic control should be the big letters and streaming media at scale should be the small letters here, but um, I only have 15 minutes and I had to pick one or the other. Um, but we can hallway talk about streaming media at scale anytime. Um, so what is traffic control? Traffic control is a set of components um, that can be used to build, manage, uh, maintain, monitor, configure um, CDNs. Um, it's a project that started at Comcast. I'll go through a little bit about our history. Um, so what's a CDN? Um, if you went to Jeff's talk on Monday at the Tomcat track, you're going to see a little bit of the same slides. We like to share our slides back and forth. Um, uh, a content delivery network basically is a distributed system of servers um, for you know, delivering content over HTTP or HTTPS. Um, I don't even know why I have this. It's all up there. Um, basically, uh, we, traffic control can be deployed in any number of tiers, but the way a CDN works is you have these edge caches all over your, um, your geographic region. For us at Comcast, that's the US. Um, for other bigger CDNs that are worldwide, it's all over the world. Um, and then, and then you, you escalate your tiers up. Um, we have mid-tier is our second tier, as we call it, which is more strategically located based on the network. Um, so the goal is to get, is, is to roost um, bandwidth on the network upstream uh, and deliver content as fast as you can downstream. <clears throat> and Cisco, who's one of our contributors to traffic control, they have some committers on traffic control, they published a study in 2016 that said 52% um, of internet traffic, of all internet traffic, was going across CDNs. And by 2021, that's going to get to 71% of all internet traffic. Um, so CDNs are a big deal. They're a big space. As at Comcast World, we're moving more and more to IP. You know, everybody <laughs> probably has Netflix or Amazon streaming or you know, streaming du jour um, app. And you know, that's all going over a CDN somewhere on someone's network, um, probably our network if in the US. Um, oops. So like I said, we like to share slides. If you're at Jeff's talk, you saw something very similar to this. Um, Basically, when you're building a CDN, there's just a minimal set of components that you need to have. Um, you need to have your caches, and those need to be all over, like I, like I said. You need to have some sort of way to route your traffic. Um, tra Jeff talked about Traffic Router on Monday. That's a, a Tomcat application we use for doing that. Um, you need some sort of health protocol to know if your caches are healthy or not, and not route traffic to them if they are not healthy, and route traffic to them if they are healthy. Um, you need to have some sort of configuration management tool. We have thousands of servers in production. We need to get all the we need to get consistent configuration files to them all in a timely fashion. Um, so there needs to be some sort of configuration management tool. And finally, logging analytics. Um, you know, all of these, every single fragment or or, vit, or image file or whatever it is that's requested. You know, that's a log line, and we're capturing that, and we're trying to store it. And I think on one of the talks on Monday, someone was like, just put your logs in Elk, and it'll be done. Uh, I wish it was that easy. Um, you know, we're, we're, we have billions and billions of transactions a day, and uh, so, so it's kind of a hard problem to solve for us, and one that we're trying to solve. Uh, anyway, when we set out to build traffic controls, really, we knew we did a lot of testing on caches, and we tested HTTPD and Squid and Nginx and all the ones that are out there, but Apache Traffic Server was the one that worked best for us. Um, and we didn't have to go build anything. It was just there. The community is great. They inspired a lot of what we do. Um, that's why our name is so bland and like theirs. Sorry. Um, not sorry, though. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, and then the rest of it, we decided we we're going to take this holistic approach. And we weren't going to go build 20 different scripts and all this stuff that don't talk to each other and try to just deploy all this and hope it works. We decided we we're going to take a holistic approach um, and build something that, you know, that we could share um, and that we could use. Really, we were just trying to solve our needs at that time. But then we realized it was something we can share, which I'll get to. Um, so before I go too far into to that about traffic control, um, I want to start with where our story begins. Um, so the whole reason we even started out this way 
is because in 2011, Comcast announced a partnership with Samsung TVs to bring um, TV to, to Samsung devices or tablets, TVs, et cetera. And that's different than what Comcast had been doing. We were delivering video over Qualm using broadcast, and now we're going to, to IP using um, you know, unicast UDP uh, or TCP. And we had to figure out, like, how are we going to do this? And we quickly realized um, we need a CDN. And if this would go, there we go. Um, so Comcast, we had traditionally been a, a, a buy, a buy company, right? I mean, we go out, we buy whatever the product is. Some people that are called integrators, they go integrate it, and it's great, and we have pay, pay for support and all that. Um, but with this new world we were going into with X1, um, which is what this product became, uh, we couldn't do that. Like, we could do that, I guess, but it was just not financially feasible. And we needed to build something, and we needed to build something that worked. Um, so we set out with, with you know, Comcast, and we were like, all right, we got to build this, and we got to make this um, um, something that can scale and that we can use. Um, but before we wrote any code, we were like, we need to figure out what our design principles are going to be. And I think, um, I, I don't think I know, these are design principles we still use today. But I think coming up with these design principles before we wrote any code really helped us, uh, helped guide us in the right direction in this. I don't think, if, I think if we didn't sit down and think about how we were going to do this, um, it wouldn't have turned out the way it did. Um, so, th so the design principles can be, can be boiled down to these four things. Um, we're going to leverage open source software, common hardware, and industry standards like HTTP, the HTTP spec, for example, wherever possible. Um, like I said in the slide before, this was kind of a mind shift for Comcast. Um, all customer facing parts are IPv4 and IPv6. Right now, today, as I stand here, that doesn't sound that impressive, probably. Um, but in 2012, when we made this decision, um, saying that, hey, we're going to support IP IPv6 all the time out of the box, was like, what? You guys are going to do what? And we were like, yeah, this is what we have to do. Um, System's going to be horizontally scalable. Um, we want stateless as much components that are loosely coupled. Um, and we want 100% availability. We can't take the CDN down for maintenance. Like, you can't just be like, everybody stop streaming. Stop getting your videos on your website, or your, your images off your website, or your static website. All of that. Stop it. We got to upgrade. We couldn't do that. So, you know, we had to build something that was 100% available. Um, and also, you know, we had to ingrain in the culture of the company that maintenance, testing, and outages were going to be a part of normal life. Um, if you're a CDN, you're really close to the network. Um, there's these big things called like bulldozers or tractors, and they like to cut fiber. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that's what they like to do the best. Um, and we got to figure out how to deal with that. We just can't have you know, you know, an outage because some fiber got cut somewhere. There was some, a fiber cut last night, actually. <laughs> and CDN kept running, no problem. It happens all the time. Um, or I think there was one where it was like an overhead. The guy had a ladder overhead. Anyway, that was a bad one. Um, anyway, these are things that we had to grant into the company. We're going to do maintenance in the day. We're going to do testing in production. <gasps> Nobody likes that, but guess what? At the scale we're at, like, we can't just go build a lab and be like, all right, we're going to have 20 million people use our lab. Like, we have to do some of that testing in production. It's just the, the way it is. <clears throat> anyway, so we started out. These were our design principles. Cool. We got this in. We're ready to go. Um, so in 2012, in January, we were ready to start work on CDN. Um, we sat down. It was one of the guys that's probably still on the team, uh, probably started editing a Perl file, um, unfortunately, because he knew Perl the best. <laughs> We saw a pearl in there. Um, but it, it was good. We started work. In May, Comcast came out. They, they announced the national rollout of the X1 platform. This was launched with a vendor lock-in CDN third party that was not us. And we were like, well, now we really have to get in gear. I almost cursed. We really have to get in gear um, because you know, we don't want this vendor lock-in forever. And this, the longer this goes on without our code, the more likely it is that we're not going to have the chance to do this. Um, so by October, we got the IPCDN into production. It was called IPCDN back then. Moving on to 2014. We'll skip over 2013. It was just a lot of heads down, writing code, committing, writing code, committing, you know, scaling, scaling. In January of 2014, this is important, Comcast and Cox, which is another cable company in the US, announced a deal to bring X1 um, to 
Cox. So we syndicated that to them, licensed it to them, which included the CDN. At the time, our team had six people on it. We were like, there's no way we can build all of this in Comcast and then go help build all of this in Cox. We just can't support the two things at once, plus all the growth that we're seeing. So we knew what we had to do. We had to open source this. We had to make this available so Cox could do this themselves. Whoever else was looking to do similar things could do this themselves. And in 2015, in April, we achieved that by you know, getting through all the legal and open sourcing it to github.com slash Comcast um, slash traffic control. It was great. It was cool. Um, we were happy. We had, oh, that line got messed up. Um, we had four confirmed installs and five, a total of five external contributors by then uh, when we launched. Um, we're excited. You know, things were great. Time went on, and uh, by, by 2016, you know, we realized there's some limitations here with putting this on the Comcast GitHub account, uh, with the way that we want to we want to go with this. There's just some limitations here, and we knew from all of our work with Traffic Server and the great community that they have how great the Apache Software Foundation was. So it was an easy decision for us. We were like, okay, we're going to take this off of Comcast GitHub account. We're going to donate to the Apache uh, to Apache. And we're going to join the incubator. So in, in um, July of 2016, we entered the incubator. Um, now, it took us all the way until February of 2017 to get our first release through the incubator. And that was not because we waited. Like, we tried in August. And it took us probably, I think it was 11 release candidates. And I'm pretty sure Justin and, and JDA did not like us very much then um, because it was always like licensing this and and you know, silly stuff, but we were learning, and, and they were very patient with us. And uh, it, you know, it was, a, it was a great learning experience. And, and by 2018, finally, you know, we, we made it through. We grew our community. We were up to 16 committers from six different companies. Um, in May, we graduated. Um, so now here we are in September, uh, you know, four-year-old, or four-month-old <laughs> Apache project. <laughs> Feels like four years sometimes. Um, anyway, so that's our, our journey to TLP. So how are we doing today? Well, we have 19 committers from seven different companies, so we're continuing to grow. We're still kind of infants, right? Like, we're not really even crawling yet as far as open source is concerned. Um, but, but we have some good action on, the, uh, on our code and on, on GitHub. Um, we're up to 70-plus unique contributors. So we get a lot of, I'm sure all you guys do with your um, guys and gals do with all of your open source projects. We get flyby. Oh, here, I updated your documentation for you. Or you have this JavaScript bug, and I like to write JavaScript, so here's a, here's a JavaScript pull request for you. And we got over 70 of those. We're pretty proud of that. Um, on, on the downside, you know, not everything's all flowers. We do struggle with, um, we have a lot of open pull requests and issues. And a lot of our, I don't want to say a lot of our contributions are limited to Comcast. A lot of our development is. Um, a lot of the companies, or a lot of the, open source community that we have, our users, and that's great. They give us a lot of great feedback, um, but some of them don't really have like a development staff or anything. Um, but that's not going to change our focus, and that's not going to change the way that we're doing it. We knew that going into this, um, that we're here to support, support the whole community, and I think the whole community is better because of it. Comcast is better because of it, and the product's better because of it. Um, so I did promise a little bit about scale. Um, so a little bit of scale on what we're doing. Um, we're, we are serving, and I took an informal poll of all of the, um, all of our, our community members that would share it with me. Um, so this is kind of what I boiled it down to. This is not just Comcast or any one company. Um, but com uh, traffic control CDNs in production today are serving more than 35 petabytes a day. Um, if you're at Jeff's talk on Monday, he called these LOCPMs, Libraries of Congress per minute. Um, a Library of Congress is 15 terabytes. Um, we're doing about, I did the math, it's about 1.6, I have 1.5 up there, about 1.6 libraries of Congress per minute. That's how much CD, these uh, CDNs are serving. Doing more than 1 billion transactions per day, which is over a million transactions per second. Um, when I talked about logging analytics problems, um, you know, there's where our scale is. So that, those are the problems we have to solve for. And in, in, to date, um, I, you know, I cooked the books a little bit, went back to when we first started with the IP CDN. Um, you know, that was like October. I think we served like 20 gigs of data that whole day. Anyway, from then until now, um, 18 exabytes of data has been served in total. Um, this is video, uh, images, configuration files, static web files, all of those, whatever else our other uh, uh, community members are using. 
And so for those that don't know, an exabyte is a one with 18 zeros. So that's a whole bunch of data. Um, I don't know how much money that would be if you were paying for a CDN service, um, but it would probably be a lot, even if it was like a penny per gig. Um, so why do we choose ASF? Clicker. There we go. Um, first of all, friendly to contributors. Um, one of our problems with github.com slash Comcast is in order to contribute back to our project, guess what you have to do? You have to sign a Comcast CLA. So a lot of people came in, they're like, this is great and all, but no way my company is gonna let me sign a CLA that says I'm giving my code back to Comcast. Just not gonna happen. Have fun with that. See you later. Um, so moving to the ASF helped us out tremendously with this. Um, provides mentorship to new projects. I mentioned the incubator earlier. Um, Justin and, and John, um, they were great. And, and the rest of the incubator as well. Uh, mostly those two, because I think they were the ones that really got the brunt of everything we were trying to accomplish. Um, the incubator gave us a good roadmap for success or not. And I put or not in there because I think that's important. Like, just because you're in the incubator doesn't mean you're going to graduate. If you're in the incubator, you could not graduate. You could realize that maybe this isn't a viable open source project or you know, maybe there's just not the community around this that we thought there was. Um, and then mentorship. So we had, like I mentioned with Apache Traffic Server, um, Leif Hedstrom and, and Phil Sorber, they were our mentors uh, among a few others, but those two in particular really helped us out a lot and taught us how you know, to navigate the waters of Apache. They knew who to talk to when we had problems, um, all that stuff, and they really, really helped us through. Um, Bootstrap Infrastructure, shout out the Infra team. Um, do so much great work. They solved a lot, of, a lot of problems for us. We're just solved. Like, where do we go put our build servers so that everyone can get to them? And how do we convince Comcast that this is OK? And blah, 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 blah. I was all done. And for the infra's got it. We got mailing lists there. We got Jenkins stood up. No problem. Slam dunk. It's great. But mostly, we joined because of the Apache way. And community over code, I'll get to last. It's underlined because it's been a big theme of today. But you know, being a project like us that has so much development done by one company, but a community that's, that's pretty diverse, um, openness is important. So we could easily go into our bubble and do the wrong thing and like make decisions internally and not share those. But instead, you know, with the Apache way, we do everything on the mailing list and we make sure that you know, even if we're in an office together and it's Jeff and I, we're going to still share this on list. That's the right thing to do. We have community members that are impacted by this. And they, we want their opinions on it, too. And so openness, this really helped us out with that. It was great. Uh, meritocracy, um, you don't have to write code to be a contributor to our project. I mean, we have plenty of committers that just go out and they're like, hey, have you guys seen this weird bug every once in a while? And we're like, oh, yeah, Steve saw that in production. And now we're seeing that in production. And you know, that's really helpful to us. That's stuff that you know, maybe somebody else in the community sees it, and we fix it, and it never uh, never gets to us, so we don't see the same problem in production. So the meritocracy there is great. Um, <coughs> consensus, like I said, goes back to openness, really. Like, we get consensus from all the community members before we make any changes there. And it's easy, it would be easy for us to, to take all this and just hug it tight and not do that, but that's not the right way. But finally, community over code. Um, I know it's been a theme of today, or this whole week, really. Um, and coming to these Apache cons, you always get that, and you always like are reinvigorated, and you remember, yeah, that's why we do this. Um, but I remember we first put our, our code up, or we first talked about going and open sourcing our project, and we were like, oh, our code's so cool. Nobody else really does this. We're just going to put our code up, and people are going to flock, and they're going to be like, oh, this is so great. It wasn't like that at all. <laughs> like, we put our code up, and people are like, yeah, whatever. Um, I can't even install this thing. Like, what are you guys doing here? So we really had to work hard on building community. That was the hardest thing um, about getting ourselves ready to graduate the incubator was we had to build a community up and we had to do a lot of um, you know, support and help and community outreach and, and build that community up. And I think, I, I know we have learned how important that really is. Like our project is so much better because of the community. Um, and we realize that. Um, and finally, like, we're big users of Apache. Um, we love all the projects. Um, so you know, we're happy that we're a part of this ecosystem as well. So anyway, thank you, Apache, and, and thank you, ApacheCon.